Now that we know how to make a basic patch on the organelle and use the knobs to affect the sound, we're going to make a basic synthesizer and get some input from the keys. So we'll fire up the graphical display and we're going to make a new patch by copying the empty patch. And we'll call it basic synth. Rename it, get out of there, and on the organelle, choose reload and select basic synth. So if we take a look at the notes that the mother patch sends out, we'll notice we get two numbers, a, a note number, a MIDI note number, and a velocity. This is a MIDI compatible message where the note number is a MIDI note number and the velocity is a number from 0 to 127. Of course on the organelle the keys are not velocity sensitive, so that velocity is just hard coded at 100. In our patch, we can receive those notes and unpack them into note number and velocity. And then we want to have the note number control the frequency of an oscillator to make a basic synthesizer. Note number is not the same as frequency, so we want to use a built-in object called MIDI2 frequency, abbreviated M2F, to get the frequency value. Let's just see what that looks like. Now when I press this A, note number 69, we get a frequency of 440. We'll feed that into the oscillator and we'll throw the output of the oscillator to the out left and right buses so we can hear what's going on. The problem is the oscillator never shuts off. It's playing forever. The simplest way to get it to shut off is to control the amplitude of the oscillator by the note number. Not the note number, the velocity. We want the amplitude of the oscillator to go from 0 to 1, so we want to divide the velocity by 127. Because remember, it's a MIDI style velocity going from 0 to 127. Now, we have it shutting off. The problem is it makes a nasty sounding click because it's instantly jumping from zero when it's off to whatever value it is when it's on. To do a proper envelope we use the line object. And instead of jumping to that amplitude, we're going to ramp there. The line object receives two numbers, a target value and a ramp time. The target value, this dollar sign one, gets replaced by the velocity, and the ramp time is short. It's just 10 milliseconds to eliminate that click. And the click is gone. But it might be cool to have the knobs control the attack and decay of the synthesizer instead of having that hard coded just at 10 milliseconds. So first we need to separate the note ons from the note offs. And the trick we use is the select object, select zero. So a velocity of zero is essentially a note off. So that will send a bang out of the left outlet. Any other velocity number is a note on, which will go out the right outlet.
So when the velocity is zero, the target value of the line is zero. We're ramping down to zero. And when it's anything else, the target value is the velocity. Of course, that sounds the same because we haven't changed that ramp time. So now we want to have knob one ah, control the attack. We want the attack to go from, say, 0 to 100 mil or 1,000 milliseconds. So we're going to multiply knob 1 by 1,000. And then we have to remove this message and replace it by a pack. So now knob 1 is controlling the ramp time for the attack. Slow, fast. Unfortunately, we can hear that click again because we're letting the ramp time go all the way to zero, which is an instantaneous jump. So we want to add, say, 10 milliseconds so that the ramp time can never be less than 10 milliseconds. So we never get that click. Now when it's all the way down, it's a nice short attack, but with no click. Actually, I'm going to lower this to 5 milliseconds to make it a really quick attack, but still with no click. So then we do something similar with the release. We have to replace that message with a pack, because we're packing the target value, which is just 0, and a ramp value, which now is going to come from knob 2, because this is going to be the release. We'll use the same trick. We'll give it a maximum release of 1,000. And then we'll just add 5 at the bottom, just so it never can go to 0 and give us that nasty click. So we can have a quick attack with a slow release, or a slow attack with a quick release. or anything in between. Maybe we want to have knob 3 control the tuning of the oscillator. Instead of just having it always be locked to the keys, what if we receive knob What we're going to do is convert this into a signal. So that it's a continuous stream. And then we're going to multiply that signal, that frequency, by knob 3. But let's first multiply knob 3 itself. by, say, 4. So the frequency will be able to get multiplied up to 4, which is sort of drastic, but should be fun. And actually, I'm going to use that same smoothing trick we used last time. We're going to convert the knob value into a signal, run through a low-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 10, and then feed that into here. Try to get this cleaned up. Patches have a tendency to get kind of crazy looking, but it can always be broken down into simpler parts. Now, the reason we didn't use that low pass filter trick on knob one and two, which are doing the attack and release, is that these knob values are really just being snapshotted when the note comes in. When the note comes in and it's, say, a velocity of 100, it's going to go out this right outlet get divided by 127, and then it's going to get packed with whatever the value of knob 1 is. So it doesn't really matter if the knob value is not super smooth, because it's not being used in a continuous fashion. It's just being snapshotted when the note comes. 
But now knob three should be controlling the frequency. Of course, it goes all the way to zero. But it's still pretty fun. So now we have knob one, two, and three all doing things. Of course, there's still nothing on the screen saying anything about what the knobs do. So we can fix that by sending some messages. So we're going to send some messages to display stuff on the screen. And these send messages are received by the mother patch again, and then they're sent to the organelle hardware itself. So there's a message called screen line one. And you can send anything to screen line one. For example, the value of knob one after it's been multiplied by a thousand and added one. But we really want to be a little more specific and say what that knob's doing. So we're going to make a message and say one colon for knob one attack. And then we do dollar sign one milliseconds. That dollar sign one will get replaced by this value. Attack. Sometimes I find it's a little hard to read with all those decimal places. So we can also just convert this to an integer using the I object. Feed that into the message. And it's just an integer. A little bit easier to read. We're going to do the same thing for the release. We'll just duplicate this and say release. And this will be knob 2. And we want to send this to screen line 2. Now when I move knob 2, it's indicating the release. And once again, we do it for knob 3. Where is knob 3? Right here. And actually, this is only going from 0 to 4, so I'm not going to ch change that into an integer. I'm just going to display the def decimal value, and we'll say 3 tuning. And we'll just put x there because it's really multiplying the frequency value. It's sort of tuning. Let's just try to clean this up a little bit. Move these move these over here. You'll be using this pattern over and over again when you have the knobs coming in. You have to, you'll have to use the values in the patch in some way, but also have to format them in a way that makes sense for the screen. Change that to screen line three, and now we have tuning, release, attack. And let's just assume, because it makes a good example, that knob 4 doesn't do anything. So we'll just put 4 colon x, and we'll send that to So when the patch loads, it's going to send this out once. Just an x there meaning that knob does nothing. So this is a basic synthesizer. And let's do the same thing as last time. Save it, and then reload just to make sure everything gets initialized. Basic synth. Seems like it's working. Checking the display. Everything's displayed, including that X.
and I think we're ready to go. We'll close this down and just give it one last check. Seems to be working.